Right, so what we'll do for the first part of the practical is run through analysis of covariants and covariants, and I think it makes more sense just to dive into a research scenario for this in order to just illustrate what ANCOVA is doing. So we've got a research scenario here. Sports scientists were interested in the effectiveness of two training regimes on performance in a race. These were participants who had signed up for a 10K run. And they were allocated to two conditions, and each condition received a different type of training regime. So the first, the first group took part in an interval training regime. So they combined low and high impact exercise. They took rest days. And the second group took part in training, which just incorporated the same routine, exercise routine, every day with no rest days. They wanted to see if these two types of regime would have an impact upon their race time. But they also noticed that there was quite a bit of a difference in ages. So they thought that this might have an effect on their race times. So they wanted to control for this in the analysis. They weren't really interested in the effects of age on race time, but they just wanted to control for it. So what we've got here is an independent sample design. And this time we've got one independent variable with two conditions, the training regime they took part in. But we've also now got what's called a covariate, which was the participant's age. And this is just simply included in the ANCOVA to control for the effects of age in order to then look for any effects of condition, i.e. the training regime, above the, after parceling out, if you like, the effects of age. The dependent variable was race time. So what we've got here is a design that's suitable for analysis of covariance. So I've got this data in SPSS now. I'm in variable view at the moment. I'll just click on values just to indicate that this has been coded. The regime, training regime used one for interval, two for steady state. And in the data view, this will look like this. And what we need to do now is whenever you're doing more than a one-way ANOVA, so if you've got more than one independent variable or you've got covariates, you need to choose a different option in SPSS. If you go to Analyze, go down this time to General Linear Model and click on Univariate. This is a box you'll use whenever you've got an independent design where you've got either more than one independent variable or you've got covariates. You're still only adding one dependent variable into this type of design. If you wanted to enter more than one dependent variable, then you get onto multivariate ANOVAs, which we're not going to cover. But the options are there in SPSS to do that. This time, the dependent variable still goes in this box here. The fixed factors now are the independent variables. Any independent variables you've got go into this box. And you'll see down here, there's a box for covariates as well. And this time, this is when you want to add any continuous variables that you want to control for in the analysis. So in this case, it will be age. So we'll enter those in now then. The fixed factor or independent variable was regime. The covariate was age. And the dependent variable was race time. And what we'll do now is just select some options that we need in SPSS. If you go to the options box, this will bring up this box here. What we're going to do is going to select descriptive statistics, uh, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. And also move this regime across to this box. We'll get the mean scores for regime, which you'll see we've already ticked on descriptive statistics anyway, but this box will give you the estimated marginal mean, so I'll talk about those more in a minute. We click on continue, and then you can run that ANCOVA then by clicking on OK. What we can have a look at first then is just the mean scores, just here, so we can see that these were race times in minutes, and the interval group was getting a mean race time of around about 57 minutes, the steady state group recorded mean race time of 62.97 or just under 63 minutes. So there looks like there's a difference there. What we need to do is test whether that difference is significant after controlling for age. 
First of all, we'll just check the Levine's test to see if that's all right. Have we got equal variances? Yes, we have. This is not significant, so we can assume equal variances. We'll then go on to the main ANOVA table. What you can do for this table is ignore the first two rows of data here, the corrected model and the intercept. What we'll do is just ignore those and get on to what we're interested in, which is the main effect of training regime control for age. So the first line we're really interested in is this line here. And this gives you the statistics for the variable age on the dependent variable. In other words, is age associated with race time, regardless of what training regime they took? So we can read across this line, and the way that you'd report this is for, as in a typical ANOVA, report the F statistic with the degrees of freedom first. The degrees of freedom in this case are reported as the degrees of freedom for age, which is one, and the degrees of freedom for error, which is 27. And the F statistic is 5.36. Now this is significant at a p-value of 0 0.028. So what you can interpret from that is that age was significantly associated with race times. There's also an effect size here. So when you selected estimates of effect size before, it gives you this automatically now in SPSS, and this is known as the partial eta squared. It can be interpreted uh, the same way as an eta squared. It just partials out the effects of any other variables in the model. The calculations, if you wanted to go into this, you, I think you will have covered in the lectures anyway, but it's a slight variation on eta squared. The partial eta squared for this case was 0.17, so that represents a large effect. So age was having quite a large effect on the race times. The next step, you can view this as the model now has partialed out the effects of age. It's controlled for those effects and then after controlling for those effects, does the effect of regime then have a further impact upon the race times? Now, what I did for this example is I started off by just running a t-test on this with regime as the independent variable and race times as the dependent variable. And it came out as non-significant. It was approaching significant. It was around a p of 0.09 but it wasn't, it didn't reach the criteria. You can see now that after controlling for the effects of age, this regime effect becomes significant. Only just, but we take that as significant. And what it's done is it's reduced the amount of noise in the data. So the non-significant t-test that I was talking about was likely to be a result of noise in the data resulting from the fact that participants' ages differed quite a lot. And we know that the age was associated with their race times. So this is controlled for that by reducing this variability or noise in the data. And one of the key strengths of an ANCOVA is in this case, when you do that, you get a significant p-value for regime. So we can say that there was a significant difference between the regimes on the race times recorded. To report this again, you'd report the degrees of freedom this time for regime and the error degrees of freedom. The F statistic, which in this case is 4.28. The P value, which is 0 0.048. And the effect size eta squared or partial eta squared, which is 0.14, which represents a large effect. What we'll do now is just return to these mean scores. And I've got the original descriptive statistics that we got. And I've also got the estimated marginal means here. You can see that they're slightly different. So for the dependent for the mean scores from the original descriptive statistics, we've got 57 for interval and just under 63 for steady state. Now this time for the estimated means, we've got a lower mean score, slightly lower mean score for the interval group, and a slightly higher mean score for the steady state group. And what it's done with these estimated marginal means, as I said, it's partialed out the effects of age. And you can view this as these would be the mean scores if age across the two groups and across the participants was held constant. 
in this case, the mean age was 30.07. You can see just below this table here gives you that. So assuming or imagining that all participants were exactly this mean age in the groups, these would be the mean scores that you'd end up with on race time. So this is what it does when it controls for this age variable. It alters these marginal means, and it gives you a more accurate reflection of how the groups actually differ once you've controlled for age. What we need to do now, then, is test for some additional assumptions. If this was your own data, then you'd start off by testing for the common assumptions, such as normality of data. We've already looked at the Levine's test to see if the group variances were equal. And what we'll do now is test for the homogeneity of regression slopes. What this means is we're looking, we've got two continuous variables in this data. We've got if age and race time. And what we are assuming is that the relationship between age and race time is the same across all of the groups, or in this case, between the across the two groups that we've got. So what we want is for this relationship to be similar. If it's very different, then we have a problem running ANCOVA for this data. But we can check this in ANCOVA. If we go back up to Analyze and down to General Linear Model again and to Univariate. And then what we'll do is put the variables back into these boxes. This time, we want to click on this box here, model. And we want to build a custom model, which includes an interaction term. And this will tell us whether this relationship differs across the two groups. So click on custom, and then add regime and age separately. That will look at the main effects. And then select both of these together, regime and age together. If you move this over now, it should add both of these in one go here. And it's got age by regime. And this will look at the interaction between those two variables. If we click on continue and then click on OK, we'll get the output that we got before. But what we're interested in here is just one thing. If you look at the main ANOVA output table, we're looking at the p-value for the interaction at term or the interaction effect now. So it's this one here. And this is not, not significant in this example. So basically, this means that when it's not significant, you can assume that the relationship between a, the covariate age on the dependent variable race time is similar across both of the groups, both of the regimes. If it's significant, it suggests that the relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable differs significantly between the two groups or as many groups as you've got. So that's when you've got a problem. In this case, you're looking for a non-significant p-value. And if you get this, then that's an assumption, one additional assumption of the ANOVA that's been met for this data. And then what we need to do now is just test for one additional assumption, which is the independence of the covariate and the independent variable. This means what we want to find, and one of the assumptions for ANCOVA, is that if you looked at the independent variable, you'd expect to find similar scores on the covariate between the groups. So the way we test this is go to Analyze, back into General Linear Model, and you can put this time regime in the fixed factors box again. This time, though, we want to put age in the dependent variable. We're treating age now as a dependent variable and just asking, does age differ depending on what regime they were in, the type of training regime? Then this time, all we're interested again is one thing, which is the p-value for regime this time. This is not significant in this example. So this just tells us that the but for the variable age as the dependent variable this time, there were no significant differences in age across each of the training regimes. So this is another assumption that's been met. And then what we can do finally for this ANCOVA is just report the statistics and interpret the effect. 
could report it something like this. There was a significant association between a participant's age and their race time, and then report the, the, the relevant statistics for that effect. There was also a significant main effect of training regime after controlling for the effect of age. Then you'd report the relevant statistics for that. And then just pick out what that actually means. So participants who took part in interval training had faster mean race times than those who took part in steady state training. And you could use these descriptive statistics or the estimated mean scores. I've used the estimated mean scores here, but it just gives an indication of how better the participants in interval training were doing compared to the other group. That's really all you'd need. You could add standard deviations or standard errors if you wanted to, but we'll just keep things simple for this example. And then that wraps up the ANCOVA. So what we'll do next is go on to a two-way factorial ANOVA.